Hi, this is Mike with OPST, and today we're going to bring you some more tips and tricks. Today is fly tying. Um, dealing with hackles, one of the things that we learn when we tie, we tie with other people, you learn other tricks, other things that people do that simplify things. And everyone has their own way of doing things. Um, not right, not wrong. It's, it's just how people do it. So if you pick up something that someone else is doing that makes things easier, and this is one of the ones that, that I picked up last year when we were on the Skagit, when Ed Ward was up and uh, Jeff Mishler was with us and we were doing the, he was doing his podcast with Ed and, and Dave Pinchowski and we were all sitting around tying. So while we were tying, we were tying with hackles. We were tying and it was like, okay, you, you put a hackle in. Always, everyone has a trouble with hackle and, and there's, you know, everyone has these, everyone wants these. And, but most people struggle to put them in and, and get them to lay right. You. You spend all the time getting them to sit how you want them to sit, and and then as soon as you start adding the next hackle, this hackle may rotate on you and, and change, and it's just something we've always dealt with. And when, when this is a huge thing that Jeff showed us while we were up there, and, and I wanted to pass it on to you guys. And uh, we we've already worked on the the Pinchowski's carpet spider, so basically this is. A spider that's just about finished now and we're going to modify it from our kits that we have and, and and so we have some grizzly hackle here and i'm going to show you how to add those um there's different ways of adding or picking hackle out of your 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 cape here but some guys will take one off the right one off the left i i've never done that there's a lot of guys that are like oh no that's we have to do it um our flies aren't that technical. I just want fishy flies. So I pick out two that are the same size and same shape. And here I'll show you one of the best tricks that, that I've learned in the last few years. So the first thing you do is pick out your two hackles. I got two that are about the same size. And you're going to line them up so you get them the same on there so you're working with the same length. So spend some time with this. Get them, get them tip to tip. So they're lined up like so. So how you see I'm tip to tip here. And now I'm gonna pick my length. So you can make them short, you can go into here, um, you can make them long. For this one, we're gonna do a longer pattern. So it's a, it's a bigger fly, so we're gonna, we're gonna go all the way to the end. And the next step you'll do is basically while you're holding them together right here, you're gonna peel off some of the hackle here and give yourself a working space. So now you just have the exposed stem. So now you have your hackle length like you want. Pretty standard. Everyone will normally grab that now, and and then you're going to tie your hackle on. Has been the standard way to do it. And when when Jeff showed us this, it, it, as as little a trick this is to me, is it, a game changer for hackles because I hated hackles because they always fought. So hackles have a have a direction. They curve one way or other. They go. There's a natural curve down, and then if they're inverted they're curved up so when you have this laid on so this one closest to me I want curved into the fly so I want that material so the trick is don't lay it here like this because then it'll spin actually cross it over so now my curve on that natural hackle is is facing the camera here and I'm gonna lay it down just like this and you're just gonna wrap a couple wraps right here so now it's opposite of what you want. It's facing the opposite direction. It's curved the, the, the opposite direction. Now you're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna lay this down with the curve facing me versus normally if you were gonna do it this way and, and you're gonna make an X right here. So over the top of the last one, you can make some adjustments here and get your hackle like you want it. It's, it's pretty simple. Then you're just gonna wrap it in like so so now you have these long back ends. Don't pop them right here. Just take your hackle now. So again, it's curved towards the camera. All you're gonna do is pull this one over and then lay it down like so and make your wraps. And now you're ready for the next one. Same thing, go back against your X, lay it down, make your wraps. So you're wrapped in like that and now check that out. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to just cut this long excess off. And look how those things lay. And they'll lay like that every time. They're, and they, since they're curved in, they're, they're, they can't rotate now. So when you set them in place with your threads right here, they're there. If you want them more to the side, 
more to the up you could it's just about how you tie them in but it's literally they're not going to twist they're not going to move and and it's that's done so with the carpet spider is to finish it off the simple way is just to get some uh, an, one of your colors that you're working with and you just go right back to like you were tying the first carpet spider and it'll it'll block these and kind of just finish it off and hide the hide the ends and get the underbody out of your craft fur here kind of pick your length give yourself a little extra and then with it, get that all cut off there and then when like I said, we done. You've watched the, or we, you can watch the video of me tying a carpet spider, or Dave tying and hit the original doing the, and then just literally just add your material in here. A couple loose wraps that collects most of your your hair. Pull it tight. And then we like to do, and, and you're gonna get a lot of hair with these carpet spiders that comes off. That's that's totally normal, totally natural. Just Get it off your fingers, and then you're just going to move your thread forward right here like so. And then that hides everything, and then you have your complete fly right here. Um, whip finish tool. I don't have on me right now, but just tie a quick whip finish here. And your fly's done. So you can, you can brush this out, and you can like, look at those hackles when you... No matter what you do with them, and when Dave turns his fly his flies over, they'll still lay out. Once they get wet, they're gonna lay nice and flat. But when you come back this way, they're gonna look perfect. So that's one really handy tip. It's to me, it was a game changer in in the tie-in part of it because, like I said, these hackles you get them in, and they just every time you do anything they want to rotate and that rotation is it will be the vein of your existence sometimes with hackles because you'll have this perfect fly and you may finish it off and, and have your whip finish and have it glued in everything and then you, you touch the, the, the feather and it turns or it falls out via these are tied in backwards and folded over they won't fall out it, they would actually have to break the stem of the of the, the feather so it's going to be really stout and really strong and it's going to hold together really well that way and it's going to keep that profile that you want it's not going to move around another trick that with these back to the carpet spiders so depending on the depth that you're fishing um, one of the tricks that dave showed us was is adding cones so you can put a cone on the front but what's really cool is you can put one on the back um, typically they'll slide a cone on like that and then you can put your tubing on it's but one of the things i've been playing with with this so if i want a bulkier fly I'll put that cone on backwards, so I put the flared in towards the material, and then you'll put your tubing on and just push it up tight. So now my tubing is touched, the cone is backwards, and you can see how much it pushes this material forward, and this will give you instant bulk that you didn't necessarily have before by just messing with your the tube on there. And you can see how much that stuff is, is profiling right there, and when it gets wet, it's going to carry a, a good bulky and if you want to shrink it down literally flip the the cone opposite so take it off and you want a less profile or if you want a lighter fly no cone but if you want to just lighten up the the flare a little bit flip your cone over put your tube back on and this will shrink everything down and make it a slimmer profiled fly see how much slimmer that is just just by touching it. it's night and day as far as profile by just flipping that cone over and then like i said that adds weight too and so you can change cone sizes depending on the tube that you tie on some regular cones will fit some tubes some won't so you just got to play around with your cones and, and your tubes that you have but a lot of the smaller tubes will fit like the standard hairline cones or or stuff along that lines